Welcome everyone to Quito, Ecuador, but we're not going to be here for much longer, that's for sure. We're actually about to head out. Just wanted to show you the view from the apartment where we've been staying. We're about to head out though, and we're going to be taking a very long series of flights back through Lima, through Santiago, and to Buenos Aires, Argentina. So, it is 9.06 a.m., and our Uber is about to show up. So uh, let's start the clock and we'll keep it running. See exactly how long it's gonna take us to get back to Argentina. Before we do that, I just wanna say real quick, thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. All right, we've arrived in the airport in Quito and uh, brand new airport actually new terminal very beautiful it is 9 58 clock is still running and uh actually got here quite early because i didn't know exactly how crowded it was going to be you never know with international flights how crowded it's going to be or if you're going to take a lot of time trying to get through customs or anything like that my flight is not actually until like 1 25 in the afternoon, so I may be delayed getting through customs and we'll just barely make the flight, or I might get through in like 20 minutes and then, uh, well, you know, then we're gonna be sitting around the airport. But look, this trip, we're gonna be sitting around airports quite a lot, so might as well get used to it now. All right, I'm gonna go find out where I need to go and uh, we'll keep the clock running. But uh, I gotta get through customs, get to the gate, settle in, we'll check in later. Well, security and customs were completely empty. There was like a total of 10 people maybe going through and we have made it through into the international terminal. Like I said, our flight is at 1.25 in the afternoon and it is 10.19. So, our first uh, few hours of waiting around an airport, but luckily it's here in Quito, in a very nice new airport with uh, it seems like a lot of like shops and restaurants and stuff. So maybe we'll try and go uh, find ourselves a coffee or something because we're going to be hanging out here for a few hours, um, and then we're on our way to Lima. So we'll see you. Uh, I guess we'll see you when we're getting on the plane, and then maybe again in Lima. The clock's still running. I walked from one end of the uh, the uh, terminal here to the other. It is only five minutes later, 10.24. The clock is still running. But I figured while we search for like a coffee, maybe a little pastry or something, give you a quick, a quick little walk through of the Quito Airport's International Terminal. From one end you come down, there's like a gift shop with lots of probably very expensive souvenirs. A view out on the tarmac to all the planes lined up, ready to go, and beautiful view of the mountain out in the distance, mountains, because of course we're here in Quito, up at, uh, you know, like 9,000 feet. 2,800 meters, something like that. I've actually heard, I don't know if this is true or not. I could easily look it up, but you know what? This time I'm not going to because fuck it. I've got like a 25 hour three leg flight ahead of me. And even when I'm editing this later, like a month from now or so, I'm not gonna wanna look this up. So we're just gonna find out. People in the comments can let us know. I've heard that Quito's airport is actually at lower elevation than the rest of the city. And they do that specifically to like allow people to like allow people a little bit of uh, extra time uh, to adjust to the altitude. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, all the duty free stores here. Adorable little neck pillows. We're not buying any duty free stuff. That's for sure. Duty free is a uh, duty free is like a total trap. It's a scam. 
you think you're saving money, but <laughs> you're really just getting marked up stuff without duty taxes, which is like, okay, yeah, you're saving money on the duty, but the, the stuff's all marked up. It's in an airport, you know what I mean? We're at an airport, which means, which means it's like, uh, you know, it's gonna be expensive. Everything's expensive. I think this is gonna be our best bet right here. There's a, uh, there's a Johnny Rockets, a Juan Rockets here. There is a uh, little cafe of some sort. Down there, there's a TGI Fridays. And at the end, that's like the end of the international terminal over there. So like, that's basically it. I think we're gonna go here. I think we're gonna get our coffee here. All right. Clock is still running. All right, 10.50. We've had our uh, coffee and sitting here at the gate. Not our gate, actually. Our gate was super crowded. So I came over here to this gate, which is not crowded. You guys do that at airports? I always do that. I just go to whatever gate is least crowded. Sit there. I don't think it makes a difference, right? Anyway, I think... Uh, uh, <laughs> while the announcer talks, I think what we're going to do, because I have time to kill and because I have leftover, like lots of leftover data, prepaid data on my phone from Ecuador that's only going to be good in Ecuador. By the time we get to Peru, it's going to be worthless, so we might as well use it. We have a pretty good connection here, so I'm going to download as many YouTube videos as I can. <laughs> Clock's still running. We boarded the plane. Twelve fifty four PM. First leg is about two and a half hours. Then we'll be in Lima Airport for like three hours. Okay, we are on the ground now in Lima, Peru. We're at the airport in Lima and uh, we just made our way through uh, security, even though we're not like we're not leaving the airport, so we didn't have to go through customs. We did have to go through security, went through that, and it is 3.57 here, 3.57 p.m. in Lima. And our flight leaves at, um, might well, take a nice shot of the beautiful single terminal at Lima Airport. Lima is, uh, it's kind of a crazy airport to go with kind of a crazy city. Man, I love Lima though, I gotta say. The airport is, uh, for a city of 11 million people, their airport has one terminal. One terminal. And it runs, it's just a one big long terminal that runs from one end to the other with like everything mixed in. Domestic flights, international flights, everything is all just out of one terminal. And uh, if I remember correctly, when I was here before, they have a lot of charging stations, which is good because I need to charge up my phone. But unfortunately, like none of them work. <laughs> Uh, at least when I was here a couple months ago, none of them were working. So that's gonna be one of the things we're gonna have to do, is find a charging station, charge up our phone. I also need to go to the bathroom. And then I wanna find something to eat. There's a bunch of restaurants in here. There's like a TGI Fridays you can get sit down in. I was surprised by the number of TGI Fridays in airports in South America. It seems like every airport in South America has one. But I don't think we're gonna go there to get uh, to get food. First we're gonna go to the bathroom, then we're gonna find some food, find a place to charge up our phone. So when we flew out of here a couple months ago to go to uh, Ecuador, I do remember trying to find a spot to charge my phone and I hit up all of these like gates along here and in some of these gates they had like uh, well it looked like charging stations and uh, they just weren't working. And like, I remember asking someone who worked here about them too. Like I said, you know, this, is there one that works around here somewhere? And they were like, no, nah, no, nah, these things never work. So <laughs> we're gonna have to see if that's the case. Um, the one place that I did manage to find them was all the way down here at the end of the terminal. There are some gates that are like, you have to like go downstairs to get to, get to them. 
and uh, those gates had charging terminals that worked. And so maybe we'll just head down that way. Now it's funny because like we walk through here now and like the places where the charging stations were are, are replaced by different charging stations. So uh, and it looks like these work because there's people using them. So, but it's like a different kind of charging station. The ones they had here before had big TVs in them. They were like Samsung branded. Um, but that one over there, it's just like that white box and there's a bunch of people using it. So maybe they fixed them, man. Maybe they upgraded since I was here. I mean, it was only a couple months ago, but that'd be cool. That'd be cool if they upgraded, man. Cause like I said, <laughs> this airport's kind of like, is a little chaotic. Um, it's a very busy airport. Like it's an international airport for a city of 11 million people. So it's obviously going to be very busy, but also because of where Lima is located, it's a major connection point from, you know, like up north in Colombia and, and uh, Ecuador and also like up in South America or Central America. If you're coming down south, like a lot of flights connect through here, through Lima. Of course, our flight connects through here. And then we're going to be connecting through Santiago too, another airport where I've been recently. But uh, yeah, it looks like they may have upgraded the charging stations. And if they did, good. Good on you, Lima Airport. Good job. So let's find a place to charge up our phone and we'll find a uh, place to get something to eat too, man. Because I'm going to be here for like three, little under three hours. It's uh, about four o'clock p.m. right now and our flight takes off at 6.40 p.m. I think. So we'll be here for like two hours and 40 minutes. Anyway, this is what I was talking about down here. These were the gates. I actually flew out of one of these gates last time I was here and these gates down here don't have like skyways you get out and you get onto a bus and they, the bus takes you over to the plane and you just get up you just go upstairs to like go down the plane and these gates are completely completely empty so this actually might be a good place good place to hang out because it's nice and quiet empty down here and Let's see, actually, so this is where the charging station was, right there in that like now empty spot along the wall. And there was another one right over there. So it looks like they don't have them anymore down here. But I mean, you know, like I said, that was a couple of, uh, couple of months ago and it seems like they've upgraded the ones upstairs. So, uh, yeah, and there was one like right here. Okay, well, we go back upstairs. We go back upstairs. Before we do though, because these gates are down like on the ground. And like I said, they have, they have like doors. See like gate 29 over there. There's just a door that goes out onto the tarmac. Bus pulls up and they drive you out to one of the planes. So we can actually see the planes at ground level from here. That's cool. Yo, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty crazy way to board a plane, honestly. When we did it here the last time we were here, we were leaving for Ecuador because uh, you know you get a boarding group that you pay for, right? Or like wherever you like, if you pay uh, you know an extra on LATAM, the airline I'm flying, if you pay an extra like twenty bucks or so, you get a priority boarding group but basically they just kind of like I don't know like everybody boards the bus as if it were the plane so they call group one group two group three in order but then everybody's all on the same bus and when the bus makes its way out to where the plane actually is then it's just like free-for-all everybody just gets off and rushes to see who can be the first one on the plane <sighs> I kind of love Lima, man, honestly. But we're not going to be seeing Lima today, unfortunately. We're only going to be seeing the inside of the Lima airport for another like two and a half hours. So let's go and find a charging station. We'll find some food too. All right, so I did two things that I normally don't do. One, I'm eating in a uh, expensive airport restaurant, sit-down restaurant. I almost never do this. And uh, what we ordered was expensive, yes. And I also ordered a beer, which is something I also almost never do. 
Um, but, well, at least in an airport. But still, I don't know. I wanted a Pilsen, right? It's been a while since we've been in Peru. And Pilsen, like the beer, Pilsen Cajao, the beer of the people, I, I kind of wanted one, so. Whatever. We're splurging on a little food here, and uh, it's kind of a shitty day outside. And luckily, we're not going out there, so. We're gonna have our Lomo Saltalo that I ordered. And hopefully it'll be good, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's an airport restaurant, so who knows, right? But I do want a delicious Lomo Saltado. It's been a while since we've had one. And we're gonna be here for a couple of hours, so we might as well, right? Right. Well, that was actually quite tasty. Was it worth 26 bucks and like $8 for the beer? No, it wasn't, but it's an airport, you know, what are you gonna do, right? But, glad we had it. It was a, it was actually was a good limo, uh, Lomo Saltalo. Now the problem is, try to charge our phone, that charging station over there, I really think, I've walked up and down here, and I really think that's the only one um, around here, so. Way to go, Lima Airport. You uh, upgraded your charging stations, and now you have one that works, but you only have one, so. I think what we're gonna do instead is we have enough charge to get to Santiago, no problem. When we get to Santiago, it's actually gonna be like like uh, late at night. I think it's gonna be like 11.30 or so at night. And uh, the airport will hopefully be pretty empty. And that airport, uh, I know, has a lot more charging stations from when we uh, when we came through Santiago Airport a while ago from, I don't know, several months ago. Anyway, I think that's what we'll do. We'll charge our phone once we get to Santiago. And for now, I guess we just wait. I think what I want to do, though, is uh, I want to try and get like an Inca Cola, because it's been kind of tricky getting Inca Cola outside of Peru, um, and I'm kind of addicted to it. So let's do that. All right. Well, we're at a gate, not our gate, because our gate's super crowded. Uh, we found a gate that is uh, not so crowded, so we're hanging out, and it is 5:03 p.m. Our flight leaves at uh, 640 so it means it should start boarding in uh, I don't know about an hour or so did manage to find Inca Cola which I have been honestly craving ever since I left Peru uh, they actually have Inca Cola at some places in Ecuador but a weird thing is they have like only have sugar-free Inca Cola and it's just not the same so um, Anyway, we're gonna have our Inca Cola here and hang out for about an hour, and then hopefully we'll board the plane. And then we get to uh, fly to Santiago, where we're gonna have a nine hour layover, which I am not looking forward to at all because it's a nine hour layover like overnight. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to sleep, so we're just gonna be awake. Anyway, we'll see you when we board. So it is 5.58. All right, we're on board. Flight from Lima to Santiago. Still boarding, but look, managed to not be on a Boeing aircraft once again, thank God. And uh, actually in the strangest exit row I've ever been in. It's a weird single exit row with a strange exit door that I've never seen before. This is actually an A321. I don't know that I've ever been on this type of plane. It's strange because there's uh, there's like an exit row up in the front, and there's an exit row here, like not over the wings, and then there are some exit rows back over the wings too. Very strange design. Anyway, uh, we're gonna be in this flight for about uh, I don't know three hours, and then we're in Santiago in the airport for like nine hours. So we'll see you then. Okay, we have arrived here in the international airport in Santiago. Chile. We're here in the beautiful international terminal of Santiago. 
and uh, time change. The time jumped forward an hour. We're in a different time zone now. So right now, local time, it is 11.26 p.m. And our flight leaves at 8.25 a.m. So we are going to be here for pretty much exactly nine hours in the airport. Uh, I want to charge my phone up. We're going to have time to do that for sure because we're going to be here for nine hours. Uh, but I want to find something to eat, I guess. Maybe some coffee because I don't uh, think I'm going to sleep. But if I'm not going to sleep, I might as well get all wired up on coffee. But a quick look around the uh, International Terminal. I actually like this airport a lot. We came through here before when we visited Chile. Uh, there's like two uh, areas down there by the gates. And like if you go down to the end of either, either end of this terminal, like in the central part of the terminal, there's like some restaurants and shops and whatnot. But all the way down at both ends, all the way down this way and back behind us too. When you get to the end, it splits off into like two concourses on either side. And each one of those concourses has like more stuff, more restaurants, more shops and stuff like that. I didn't actually know that when I came here the first time. And I was waiting here in the terminal for, I don't know, probably like three or four hours last time I was here because I got here really early. Got through security and customs really fast. Um, for my exit. This is when we were exiting Chile and going to uh, Peru. And uh, I didn't realize there was a bunch of extra stuff. So I just sort of like hung out here in the central part of the uh, terminal. And only at the, like right before the flight was going to leave did I realize that there's other stuff down there. So there's actually a lot of options in this terminal for like shops and restaurants and whatnot anyway. I have no idea which gate our flight is leaving from because it doesn't leave for like nine hours so they haven't even assigned a gate so might as well just poke around a little bit the one downside of having like basically two concourses at one end and two concourses at the other end is that like if you don't know where your flight is leaving from you could be all the way down at one end and it's kind of a long walk to get down to the other end um, but we might as well walk around because we're going to be here for nine hours. <laughs> anyway, we'll check back in later. So I just checked the board back there. And uh, our flight is up there. Gate info not available. It does One of the nice things about this airport is they tell you when your gate info is going to be available. And ours is going to be available at 5.55 a.m. Which is going to be like six hours from now. So we have six hours to kill. I decided to go down this way to the uh, gate area D over here. The area D gates. Um, at this end, there's area D and area F. And the area F door was like closed. So I figured, what the hell, let's go down here to D and uh, see what's over here. Honestly, what I really want to find is, um, I can't remember exactly which uh, gate area we flew out of when we flew out of here you know months ago going to Peru it was either D or F I remember it was down at this end um, of the like the pole terminal but I don't remember if it was D or F I'm hoping it was D because there was a uh, there was a McDonald's there and I figure if any place is gonna be open like late in the airport and probably open 24 hours it's probably gonna be the McDonald's also they have coffee and uh, also I remember in the McDonald's there being like charging stations at almost every one of the tables so maybe we can just like camp out in the McDonald's for a few hours and like charge up our phone and get some coffee I really hope it's not in the F area let's see I'm coming around the corner here big reveal 
And see it? Do we see the golden arches? Can't see. Oh, actually, I think. Hold on a second. I think so. I think, is this where we were? I can't remember. I really honestly can't remember. It was a while ago when we were here. I can't remember if this is where we flew out of or not. Uh, doesn't look like it. All right, well, we're gonna have to find a plan B. We have to find some place to charge up our, uh, our phone. I have to find some coffee. Damn. Not a big fan of McDonald's, but I was honestly kind of hoping there was one down here. All right, let's figure it out. So, turns out, I remembered wrong, and we didn't actually leave before when we were here months ago from the other end. We left from this end of the terminal, and we left from right here in Puerta C. By the way, time check, it is 11.52, and uh, I saw up on a screen that this is actually where uh, the McDonald's is down in the sea area here. So hopefully we will get to just camp out in the McDonald's for like several hours. I also seem to remember that even though, uh, you know, stuff in the airport is like super expensive. For example, I just bought a uh, bottle of water, like a one liter bottle of water. One of the things, by the way, I don't like about this airport very much is they don't have like water refill stations. You pretty much just have to buy bottled water, which is kind of annoying. Um, but one bottled water, one liter of bottled water was like 6,000 pesos, which ends up being about seven bucks US, I think. I'm not sure exactly what the exchange rate is right now. When we were here a couple months of like, uh, more than a couple months ago, actually, we were here in like, let's see, December, January, February, we were here in like, end of February, beginning of March. Anyway, when we were here, exchange rate was about nine, 920, 930 um, Chilean pesos per $1. So, you know, 6,000 pesos, it's a lot. Let's see, you're coming around the corner here. And, oh look, there it is. The golden arches. Ah, oh, a tear, a single tear. A single tear from my eye. Because I'm so proud to be, proud to be an American. Because here it is, the golden arches. What's more, what's more American than the golden arches? Anyway, let's order up a coffee. Let's find a seat. Let's get our phone charged. And uh, let's hang out here for the next nine hours. All right, it's 2.03 a.m. And this is what the Santiago International Terminal looks like. at 2.03 a.m. 2.03 a.m. means it's gonna be another four hours before we're even able to see what gate we're supposed to be at. Uh, so we might as well just hang out. Not too many places here are open as far as like shops 
I was thinking about trying to get some sleep, but as you can see from all of the benches here, they're hard plastic benches with armrests on every seat. So you basically can't lie down on them. Uh, you could lie down on the floor, but like who wants to sleep on the hard, cold tile floor? And also, everywhere you go, there are these speakers that are playing music all the time. And every so often, a uh, pre-recorded voice like comes on the speakers maybe every 20 minutes saying like, you know, warning you about not leaving your bags unattended or something like that. So basically, yeah, like this. Basically saying like, welcome to Santiago, Chile, and you know, blah, 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 I don't know. <laughs> so basically, you can't really sleep either. Not really the best place to be stuck overnight. I mean, no airport really is, but since everything's kind of closed, um, except really, honestly, except like the McDonald's over here, which I think is still open, there's not much, not much to do really. Just sort of hang out, try and find maybe like an empty gate Go over here. It's completely empty, we can go sit over here. It does have me thinking though. You know, the, it's super quiet here. Just like, hanging around. Nothing to do. Got me thinking about this whole trip that I've been taking. Oh. You know, we've been in, traveling now for I mean geez since like the middle of November I think that's when we got to Buenos Aires like in the middle of November last year and now it's like the end of June so it's been a while it's been several months now and um, I'm really excited to go back to Buenos Aires I'm not gonna lie I guess some people might be wondering, like, why I decided to go back to Buenos Aires and back to Argentina and not, like, continue on to another, uh, another country after Ecuador. And, uh, there are a lot of reasons, really. But the main reason is just, like, I really enjoyed Argentina when I was there before. And, especially in Buenos Aires, it's such a big city. There's, like so much that I felt like I could still do um, in Buenos Aires, still so much to see. And, you know, when we're there, we're gonna be staying in a completely different neighborhood. We're gonna be staying uh, actually inside the, the CABA, right? The Ciudad Autonoma, uh, Autonoma, Ciudad Autonomia de Buenos Aires, basically the autonomous city of Buenos Aires. We're gonna be staying in the middle, in, in the actual city. Whereas before, we were staying out in Wilde, in the Buenos Aires province. So, it's gonna be a whole different experience, and we're gonna see a lot of stuff that we just didn't get a chance to see when we were there, because we were only there for a month, and it seems like a long time when you're taking a vacation, right, to be like in a city for a month, but when you really think about it, a city like Buenos Aires, CABA, three million people, the metro area is like almost 20 million people total, like, you could, you could stay there for years and not see everything. So, yeah, I guess I am very excited to be going back, back to Argentina, back to Buenos Aires. And, um, you know, after, after Argentina this second time, after this second trip to Buenos Aires, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to be doing. Uh, but I think, I think it was a good decision to go back, um, because... Yeah, because there's just, there's just a lot left to do. And it'll be interesting to go there in the winter now, whereas we were there in the summer before. It'll be interesting to go back and see what it's like in the winter. It'll be interesting to go back and see what, like, 
the political and economic situation is like now um, under the new Millet administration. Because when we were there in Buenos Aires, the first like time, we were there right when the political, like uh, the presidential election was happening. Like right when Millet got elected. I think it was like the third video we ever made on this channel was from like the election day, right? When Millet got elected. So it'll be interesting to go back and see like how the country's doing. I've been following in the news, but it'll be interesting to be like actually in the country and see like, you know, on the ground, like how, how things are going. So there's a little bit of a ramble, but I mean, honestly, like look around, what else am I going to be talking? What else are we going to be doing? There's nothing to do. I'm bored as hell. I'm bored as hell. And there's, there's nothing to do. I'm not going to be able to sleep. And we got, like I said, another four hours before we even figure out what gate we're supposed to be at. So I guess that's all I wanted to say. We'll check in with you in a little bit later, but I guarantee you not much else is going to be going on. All right, it's 4.01 a.m. And uh, the airport terminal here is actually starting to get a little bit busy. In fact, right around, I don't know, 3 or so, 3 o'clock a.m., some flights started coming in, more people started showing up, and now it's actually like... Uh, relatively busy but we still have like I don't know two more hours at least before we figure out what gate we're supposed to be at and then another two hours and like 20 minutes before our plane leaves but I've had a lot of coffee so I'm staying awake um, and I just gotta find a spot now Try and find a little quiet spot somewhere around here. Looks like some of these gates down at the end still don't have very many people. Let's go see if we can hang out down here. All right, 4:11 a.m. Found a nice quiet corner here in the uh, in the terminal, right next to a charging port, so we can charge up our phone and. Uh, one of the things I've been thinking about while I've been hanging out here in the terminal and the other airports is uh, I was thinking about the stay, the stay we just had in Ecuador and um, how much I really, really enjoyed it, man. Like, I really, really liked Ecuador a lot. Um, more than I thought I was going to, and I actually knew a, a good bit about Ecuador and I had, like done some research on Ecuador before and it was one of the like um, places on my like bucket list of places to go in South America for for quite a while so I knew I thought I was going to enjoy it but I, I didn't really know how much I was going to enjoy it I really really enjoyed uh, going to Ecuador and one of the things that I think like put me off a little bit about it and it's something that I kind of feel bad about now because like having traveled for this long in South America, I should have known better basically, but a lot of the news about Ecuador, um, specifically like the news that made its way out of Ecuador and into the United States was about the recent, um, you know, within the last few years, the recent spike in crime, especially like drug trafficking, um, violent crime, organized crime and things like that. Um, I mean, when we showed up in Ecuador, like, we, we arrived three or four days, or just a week or so, after the end of a months-long state of emergency that was declared um, back in January 2024, when, like, a group of, like, gang members or cartel members, like, broke into a TV station in Guayaquil and took a bunch of people hostage on air... Um, so like an act of domestic terrorism and you know that state of emergency allowed President Noboa to like use the police or I mean the uh, military to police the streets and the cities so like before that there was like a political candidates a mayor mayor candidate I think or a mayor in Manta I think and then like a, a, a presidential candidate also 
who like a presidential candidate came out and said that he was going to like stop he was going to be the uh, candidate to like stop the cartels if you like if he's elected president and then he got assassinated and like stories like that are you know it's they're shocking right and hearing that you know living in the united states and hearing that about ecuador you just immediately think like oh wow it you know it must be really dangerous and you hear about like statistical major spikes in um in violent crime and like homicides but what i should have realized and what i i realize now is that like those are all very very targeted crimes right uh there are right now drug cartels that are trying to take over certain drug trafficking routes in ecuador and if you're a political candidate who like speaks out publicly saying that you're going to be the one who's going to stop drug cartels that puts you in a very dangerous situation and if you are a gang member who uh is part of a gang that's fighting a you know a war with another gang over um like uh territory and stuff like that and like drug trafficking routes well that puts you in a very dangerous position as well and so the spike in crime and violent crime there is very targeted to very specific populations and it's not really something that if you're just a tourist like visiting and doing tourist things that you really need to worry about to be honest like i was there and i was in three different cities and i never really really felt very unsafe other than like maybe worrying about pickpocketing or potentially like um like in Quito for example the neighborhood that I was in was a neighborhood that like didn't have a lot of a lot going on at night so it was kind of deserted so it felt a little sketchy walking around there at night but that's the same that would be the same in any city really anywhere in the world if that was a situation in that neighborhood if i was in a, a city in the united states and the neighborhood was like kind of deserted at night i wouldn't want to walk around that neighborhood at night so I think what I learned was that a lot of the times your anxiety about like something that you hear especially because you're only hearing very very small amount of the news and the news news that you're hearing um, especially if you're like in the United States the news you're hearing about another country is almost always bad news because that's the that's what you know gets people to watch the news and it gives you like a very unbalanced um, picture of what the country is actually like and so um, after having been in Ecuador for you know two and a half months um, I've realized that it's it's it really it really is a great place to visit and if you're from the United States and you're you're being like you were thinking about maybe visiting Ecuador but you're being put off because of the news stories that you're hearing about violence and things like that forget it like go visit honestly go visit ecuador and just use your common sense like you would in any other country that you're visiting and you'll you'll be fine honestly you'll be fine y even some people in ecuador mentioned to me that like the cities where the most of the violent crime is spiking like along the coast in like uh Guayaquil especially like they mentioned that no those cities are, are really dangerous now and well I understand where they're coming from. Uh, I also would probably feel okay visiting those cities if I knew ahead of time, like, what neighborhoods were the good neighborhoods and what neighborhoods were the bad neighborhoods. Like, I would go visit Guayaquil the next time I go back to Ecuador to, to visit, which I will be doing. Um, I would probably go to Guayaquil. So, I guess, I don't, know what, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I mean, I guess I've really said it all. This is kind of just rambling at like 4.15, 4.20 in the morning because I'm super tired um, and I'm going a little batty. But I guess what it comes down to is I really enjoyed Ecuador and I think if you're from the United States and you're thinking about Ecuador but um, you may be a little worried about the uh, spike in violent crime there, I wouldn't worry about it too much, honestly. Go check it out. Check out Ecuador. It's, it's great. All right, it is 5.57 a.m. and we have got our gate. Buenos Aires, gate 
D01, which is right down this way. So we're gonna go ahead down there, D01. And we can just hang out at the gate, because honestly, I'm sick of just wandering around. <laughs> I've been wandering around like, just not doing, literally not doing anything, just wandering around like staring at things. I'm getting really, really kind of tired and a little punchy. And normally I can't uh, sleep on planes, but man, I might sleep on this plane. I, I, I seriously might, like if the seat's comfortable enough, I may zonk out, but we're getting close to the, close to the end here, home stretch. Probably gonna be at the gate for maybe about an hour and a half before they start boarding. And then we board, we take the flight, which is only a few hours maybe, a couple of hours. And then uh, we're there, we're in Buenos Aires again. And uh, luckily, this time I'm flying in, I'm flying into Aero Parque Jorge Newberry, which is like the airport that's right in the city. The bigger airport, Eziza, is like outside of the city. So when we flew in there, you know, back in November last year, we flew into Aziza. And we had to take this like shuttle bus for like an hour or so after. Luckily, where we're staying, the neighborhood, is pretty close to uh, Aero Parque Jorge Newberry. So when we get in, our flight gets in at like, I don't know, like 11.30 or so. We should be able to just hop a cab and get like right to uh, the Airbnb where we're staying like pretty quickly. And uh, at that point, I have to decide whether I wanna try to stay up until the evening to like attempt to maintain a good sleep schedule or if I just pass out right away. If I just pass out right away, I'm gonna screw up my sleep schedule and probably have to take like a day or two to get it back to, you know, going like in the right direction. Cause basically, if I can get there at about you know one o'clock in the afternoon and fall asleep immediately, I'm gonna wake up at like midnight and just be wide awake, and uh, my schedule's gonna be all screwed up. So we'll see. We'll see how tired I am when I get there. Maybe if I can sleep on the plane just a little bit, um, that might help. I don't know. We'll see. At least we know where our gate is. All right, it is 6:56. AM and um, you know I've been sitting here in the gate and as people have been sort of filing into the gate uh, you know I can overhear them talking and they're all I can tell they're from Argentina because um, a lot of them because like I can recognize the accent the accent in Argentina like Ar Argentine Spanish is, is like really very distinct and like very recognizable and not just the accent but also like word usage they use different words for certain things right and um, the last like the countries I've been in the last two countries I've been in for maybe like for more than three months now Ecuador and Peru they speak a much more like neutral version of Spanish um, so it's gonna take some getting used to again to like remind myself of what it's like to hear like like Argentino, right? That's the joke, right? In Argentina, they don't speak Spanish, they speak Argentino. Um, so I gotta get used to that again. Like, they they don't say uh, tu for you. Uh, like, if you would say like you are in more neutral Spanish, it'd be tu eres. But they don't say that in Argentina, they say vos sos. Uh, so I gotta, get, I gotta get used to that. And just hearing people speak with that, like, sort of this very, like, sing-song kind of Argentine Spanish. I don't know. It's, it's cool to hear again, but it's definitely something that I got to get used to again. But we're getting close to our boarding time. Um, we should probably start boarding in, I'm guessing, like, half an hour or so. And then, uh, then we'll be off. And then next time I check in, it'll probably be, like maybe a quick check-in on the plane, and then it'll be like when we're in Buenos Aires, 
we'll have to clear customs, which I don't think is going to take that long because it's, it's going to be like, I don't know, middle of the day on a weekday. Who knows? Who knows if it's going to be super busy, but I feel like Aeroparque Jorge Newberry is not like a major uh, international destination. Most international flights are going to go in through Aziza instead. So like it probably shouldn't take that long for us to clear customs. Um, but yeah, just hearing people speak uh, speak Argentino, like uh, with the accent, just reminded me of, uh, of the time that we spent in Argentina. And man, my Spanish, even though it's gotten better um, because of you know being here. In fact, like on the way over here to the airport, talking, having a conversation with the the um, Uber driver. You know, it's a, it's a long drive to get to the airport. It's at least a half an hour. And we were talking the whole way. And um, so I, I, my Spanish has definitely improved. I, was, I wasn't able to have those kinds of conversations when I first um, arrived in Argentina. In fact, there's like a video that I made uh, when we went out to San Vicente outside of Buenos Aires to see the tomb of Juan Perón. And uh, I had a really hard time having a conversation with the driver uh, who drove us out to San Vicente. I remember having, I remember that conversation. I remember having a really hard time understanding him and trying to convey what I was, what I wanted to say to him. But like now, it, on the drive over to the uh, airport in Quito, we uh, we had a good conversation with the Uber driver, like the whole way there, and we were talking about multiple subjects, and I was understanding what he was saying, and he was understanding what I was saying. So. I feel like my Spanish has gotten better. But, like I said, in Argentina they don't speak Spanish, they speak Argentino. So I gotta like practice up on my Argentino. It's 8.05 a.m. This is the face of a man who has not slept in almost 24 hours. And who is sitting on a plane behind a screaming child. Luckily, the plane is not a Boeing aircraft once again. Thank God. I was not able to sleep on this flight. Alright, it is 12.35 p.m. on Wednesday now, and we are finally, finally here. Aero Parque Jorge Newberry, here in beautiful Buenos Aires, Argentina. We made it. Man, that was a really, really long one. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we made it through customs, which took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. We made it through security. We exchanged a very small amount of U.S. dollars for Argentine, our Argentinian pesos uh, because you get screwed here at the currency exchange. And uh, later on today, hopefully, we'll be able to hit up a Claro store, get ourselves a SIM card, and uh, go to Western Union and get the good exchange rate uh, and not get screwed over by the uh, airport exchange rate here. So. We're here. We made it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it a lot more than I enjoyed the process of making it because this was a very, very long, long three flight, two layover trip. But we managed to go back through all the countries that we went through in reverse order. We came here originally from Argentina to, uh, to uh, Chile and then to Peru and then to Ecuador, and then we just came right back. Ecuador, Peru, Chile, Argentina. And here we are. So, we're gonna call it. Uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. There's gonna be a lot, a lot more Argentina content coming in the future. But if you can't wait for that, I'll put the uh, links to my three previous Argentina playlists down in the description. So, check those out while you're waiting for some new Argentina content to come out. And uh, whew, I'm gonna call it. <laughs> we'll see you next time.